Hi there, welcome. Laura Garda here with Corpilates and Yoga and Zenlotti's Training Systems, bringing you some yoga exercises to help strengthen you, help lengthen you, and just really help to open up your mind, your body, and certainly lift your spirit. So we're actually gonna start with seated easy pose here. So you're gonna have a seat on your yoga mat. Taking a moment with some lateral breathing. So let's think of putting those hands right by the sides of our body. Let's think of rooting the sits bones in, lifting up through the crown of our head, and just closing our eyes here for a few moments and tuning in to our breath and allowing ourselves to be right here, present in this moment together. We'll expand laterally as we breathe in through the nose. And you'll contract to your center as you're exhaling either nose or mouth. So if you're looking to build a little more heat internally, you'll simply want to close the mouth and allow the breath to escape through the nose. Either breath expanding in, exhaling. Give yourself two or three more breaths. Let's find a soft gaze here, trying to continue with our breathing, bringing our hands to our knees, palms are cupping over those knees, moving into some seated cat cow just to wake up the lower back and the spine here. So we'll inhale as we're tall for right now, exhale, scoop around to the back, feel your tailbone tucking in, and then inhale, you're lifting yourself up in seated cow, we extend through and open up through the chest. So it's a scoop round, and extend up, Turn to the side, give you a side view, scoop round, and extend up. Two more times. Excellent, and then find yourselves again super tall. We're gonna reach the arms up. Drop your right arm down by your side and let's stretch laterally. And then other way, laterally. Working again. And let's hold both arms back up, moving in a rotation now. Take your left hand to your right knee, twist around to the back. Inhale to your top, other side. Trying both breath versions on for size, using nose, nose, or nose, mouth. And your body's pretty smart. It'll probably switch in between the two, especially as you get more warmed up here today. And then let's lift those arms up, holding them up. We'll extend the legs out. We're just gonna shake them along the ground here a little bit. And then exhale, fold forward, legs still reach behind you. Inhale, you're up. Exhale, fold forward, reach behind you. Inhale, you're up. One more time, hold the fold. Lightly clasp those hands behind your back. Little forward fold with the chest expansion. And then lifting up, hands will come right by your side. Square off on the feet and flex. We'll bend our right knee and lean forward. And then our left, just like you're doing a little walking here, front to back, we hinge, work it out, trying to keep the feet actually still. So the feet aren't moving back and in, right? They're staying right where they are and we're just lifting up through the knees, trying to wake up those hamstrings. We're gonna start with those abdominals right out of the gate today so we can get those bad boys cooking and out of the way, right? We'll hinge it four, three, to allow both knees to have a slight hinge, square up on the feet, pull the pinky toes as high as the big toes, and reach, reach, reach forward. Hands will soften right about mid-calf area. Press one knee to the ground, does not matter which one. Oh, try to get it down there. Let's spring right back up, and then other side. And right back up, nice. We're gonna kind of sneak forward just a little bit, make sure there's some mat space behind you. Again, we're gonna get those abdominals working here right out of the gate. So our feet are together, our knees are touching, arms are out, slowly round back. You're gonna tap down, and then you're gonna slowly connect and come right back up. So the exhale takes you all the way down. The inhale has to scoop in to lift you up. So that's the tricky part. Exhale controls you back. Can you keep the belly down and lift right back up? One more time. Right back up we go. Wonderful. From here, the right leg's gonna come up. It's gonna come with us. We're gonna lower down. 
pause right here. Keep the leg in tabletop, hands lightly behind the head. We'll crunch up and tap back, crunch up and tap back. Four, three, two, hold the up. See if you can switch legs and crunch up. Four and three and two. Let's see if we can hold the up here. Bring both legs up. And then nice quick little marches, tap one foot down and then the other. And it's my opening is at the hip. The angle at my knee joint stays the same. My shoulder blades are barely touching the mat and we are working that belly in our breath here. We go four, three more sets. Last two, last one, we're not relaxing back. No, 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 hold the up, grab the backs of your legs, nod your chin deeper, rock up. All right, so we warmed up those abs. Let's go a little bit deeper now, moving into something known as the single leg stretch. So we're gonna bring our right leg back up. My one hand is to the inside of the knee. My other hand is down by my outer calf ankle area. As I lower back, this left leg is going to shoot out. And I'm gonna stay here in this suspended position. Pull the knee in and then switch and switch and switch. Now my breath, if we can, inhale, inhale, exhale. Exhale, so sneaking a little Pilates ab in here. That never hurt anybody, right? And we go four and three and two. Hold your left leg in, hand sneak behind the head, going right into the crisscross, opposite shoulder to the knee, and switch and switch. Believe me, you'll feel better when these are out of the way at the end. You'll be like, abs, what abs? Oh, I already did my abs, yay. Four and three and two. And one, come center, relax the head and relax the arms. Ah, drop those feet to the ground. Whew. Opening up for some bridging. So we gotta get those hip flexors stretched out a bit. So tracking straight ahead with the legs, arms again by our side and long. Float the hips up, send your hip flexors to the sky. Good stretch. And slowly lower down. Again, floating up, nice lift down. We're going to add on to this next bridge. So let's hold the up. From here, lift the arms up. Palms are facing each other. You're going to exhale and wheel the arms back. The thumbs will just lightly tap the floor. Now keeping the arms there, exhale and slowly lower your ribs, your waist, and your tail. And then the arms will come back down by your side. So let's try that one again because it feels so good on the way down. So coming up into our bridge, we hold our hips up, we keep the bridge part, we lift the arms, exhale and wheel the arms behind you. So make sure the ribs are funneling down, make sure they're staying pinned in and we're not overly arching through our back. Staying here, now we articulate the spine. Oh, get each bone down to the mat and then the arms land. Last time we float the hips, we add the arms, wheel them past, slowly lower down. And coming down by our side. Ah, hug your right knee in and your left knee. Both knees rocking in there side to side. We're going to leave our right knee in. Shoot your left leg out long. And let's go into a little flowing spinal twist. So you'll drop your leg away towards your right. And then lightly across the body to your left. And you're just rolling from side to side. Think of your long left side with the long leg as kind of a pole and your bent right side is the flag just blowing in the breeze around the pole. Let's do one more here. Come center and moving into lying spinal twist, we'll have our left hand to our right knee, right arm now is out to the side. Shift your hips to the right and drop your right knee to the left. Come back to the center, reposition, let's switch legs. And again, we'll just let this flag flap around the pole. Side to side, open and out, crossing, not lingering, just flowing from side to side. And then as we come back center, opposite hand to the knee, same arm out by our side, shift our hips to the left, drop your knee to the right. And let's come to the center, reposition ourselves, hugging the same knee in, nod the nose to the knee, rock up. Ah, from here, shift around all fours, position. 
Let's find ourselves moving into spinal balance. Right arm, left leg reaching out. Coming right back down, other side. Extend and elongate. Extend and elongate. Holding the right arm, left leg, staying here. Let's travel laterally out to the side. So we'll move out. Come right back and cross the center line now. So you're almost moving from side to side of your mat. One more time. Come back, center and land. Other side, reaching out. And then traveling side to side. Feel your core really trying to stabilize, keeping your spine centered. And then come back to the center. Fantastic. From here, sitting back, find a child's pose, tucking and scooping through the belly, walking those arms forward. And then moving into our downward facing dog. Look at the palms nice and wide spread. Middle finger to the front of your mat. Shift your weight forward, curl your toes under. There's your plank. And downward facing dog we go. Inhale, floating forward to plank. Exhale, downward facing dog. Having had those abdominals right in the front end of our class, we can feel the power of our core already strong, already kicking in, already supporting us as we're working through our down dog to our plank. One more time. We'll hold our downward facing dog, moving into a few reverse sun salutations today. Bend your knees, walk your hands back to your feet. Half lift out as you arrive here. Chair pose sits you down. Inhale, lifts you up. Ah, all right, so some reverse sun salutations from the back of your mat. You'll inhale, lift up. Exhale, swan dive, forward fold. Take your half lift out, collapse back down. You're gonna walk forward with your hands to your plank position. Push off the toes, drop to the knees, bend the elbows by your side, and land down to the mat. Feet stay down, kneecaps lift, and we extend the head, neck, and shoulders up for our cobra. Lower down, curl the toes, push up. Downward facing dog. From your downward facing dog, bend the knees, walk your hands back to your feet. Half lift out, chair pose sitting down. Inhale, you're up, and down. We'll do this one head on. So we come up, swan dive, forward fold. Half lift out, walk those hands out to plank position. From your plank position, push off the toes, drop the knees, bend the elbows lower to the mat. Little baby cobra here. Lower down, curl the toes, push up hands to knees, downward facing dog. And we walk our hands back to meet our feet, so you're walking back. Half lift out, chair pose. Inhale, you're up. And now let's do one more time, inhale. Exhale, swan dive. Half lift out, walk it out to your plank. Finding that solid plank position. Toes guide you forward, knees drop you down, elbows bend by your side, land to the mat. Little baby cobra we lift, lower down, curl the toes, push up, downward facing dog. Bend the knees, travel your feet back, or travel your hands back to meet your feet, you guys caught me. Half lift out, and chair pose. Just seeing if you're paying attention. All right, so from the back of your mat, moving into warrior one, we'll take the right leg and step it forward. Back heel's gonna pivot and plant. We come into our warrior one. And then from warrior one to warrior two, opening out. And from warrior two to reverse warrior. So you're gonna reach forward towards the front of your mat, turn the front palm up, and then pull back. And from your reverse warrior into side angle. Staying here for a bit today. So we're dropping down onto our front thigh, reaching the left arm up to the sky. And then let's lengthen our front leg, moving into triangle. So we simply extend, slide the hand right down the shin bone. Taking this top arm now, reaching it behind our back. Taking our bottom arm, reaching it as well behind the back. We're going to square towards our front leg and step our back left foot in for pyramid. So as we step in, we kind of square the feet. So both feet are angled and turned straight ahead. Okay, we're not on a tightrope. Remember, you're kind of wide about hip distance. Belly is glued now into your forearms that are behind you. The hinges at the hips encourage your right hip back as you fold forward. Continue folding, continue folding, continue folding. 
Slowly release the arms down either side of the front foot. Let your head relax. Let it go. Let it go. All right, nice stretch. Slowly grow back up. Let's reach those arms nice and tall. Take the arms behind your back. Find a little chest expansion here and just stretch back. Coming up tall, sneak the hands behind your head. We haven't changed our foot position. We're in our pyramid foot stance. Hands behind the head. Rotation such that your left elbow comes forward. Right elbow is back. Reach the arms out. You're going to reach forward and then tip down to your front shin bone. Twisted triangle. Twisted triangle. Keep those legs firm, particularly the back leg. Right? We like to sometimes bail in that back leg. Try to keep it nice and long. And then slowly lift up. Come back, hands behind the head, square off, hands to the hips, push off your back foot, and move to the back of your mat. Ah, wonderful, we're gonna switch legs. So we come into our warrior one again. I'm gonna turn around, just so you have a better angle there, but back to our warrior one on the other side. So make sure you've switched sides. Nice lift here. Find your root and your reach through your warrior one. So the pelvis is level, arms extending. Warrior one leads us to warrior two, opening out to the side. The knee can be kind of sneaky here. It sometimes wants to fall in. So let's make sure the knee stays tracking over the second and middle toe. And then we'll turn our front palm up, reach forward. Reverse warrior though, keep the lotus of your lunge and simply pour your body back. And then from our reverse warrior into side angle, forearm to the thigh, right arm to the sky. And then side angle takes us into triangle, lengthening the front leg, sliding down. Then top arm sneaks behind the back, bottom arm sneaks behind the back. We lift up, start to square forward to the front of our mat, take a little step in with our back foot and kind of wide. So again, remember your feet are separated hip distance, but then about three feet apart, okay? Belly is pulling in, we hinge and fold here, setting ourselves up for pyramid pose. So we fold down. Each toe has its own little space on the mat. Release the arms, allow them to come down by the sides of your front foot, let the head go. Relax through the face. Relax with your breath. Leading with your core, slowly bring your body back up. Reach those arms tall for a moment. A little stretch back, a little chest expansion here. And then pulling the torso to tall hands behind the head. We take a torso twist here, so really plugging the feet in, make sure the legs are firm. We spiral the right elbow to the front of that, left elbow to the back. Reach the arms out long. Reach long through your side body, tip down. Arm up, 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 up to the sky. Slowly uncurl, come right back up. Hands behind the head, you can turn all the way around. And we'll step forward here. Shake those legs out. So you're about middle of your mat, coming into some balance, okay? Moving into our good friend tree pose. Gotta do some tree pose today. Plugging in with both feet for just a moment. Make sure your tree has good roots. We're gonna start with the right leg. Three options for our foot positioning. We can bring it to the ankle, right? Big toe kickstand. We can bring it to the calf, another option. We can also bring it up to the inner thigh. If you're gonna bring your foot to the inner thigh, we wanna spin the big toe back. So you'll bring the foot up, plug it at the heel, and then this big toe spins back. So you're ideally externally rotated and opened out, right? Does that make sense? So we're plugging in and spinning out. Really squared and firm. And then the arms create your tree branches. Smooth breath, soft gaze. About this time is when the dog would come running up to try to jump up and get you to pet him, right? <laughs> and then release down, easy side, let's give it a go. Remember your options, big toe kickstand, calf, 
or plugging the sole of the foot into the inner thigh. You want to plug in, a little spin back of the big toe. So your inner heel and your big toe are in the same playing field. That's the tricky part. So you're plugging in there so that you can really find a good connection and surface, pushing into the inner thigh, but also returning that energy out through the lifted bent leg. And we bring those arms up. And finding your breath, smooth and steady. Right, let's come on down. We'll close that leg, shake things out a bit. And then from here towards the front of your mat, so we're moving up in the world a little bit. Take a deep breath in. Exhale, swan dive, forward fold. Half lift out, collapse back down, step back to your plank position. And then moving into downward facing dog. From downward facing dog, bend the knees, travel your feet to meet your hands, coming up, half lift out, chair pose here, let's inhale, we're up, and down. One more balance, moving into balancing chair, inhale up, exhale, swan dive, forward fold, half lift, chair pose, and then peeling the heels off the mat, so we're going to peel those heels up, and the arms are making a nice hoop out in front. Land down, big lift up, throw caution, pull in, stretch back. Nice giant swan dive, forward fold. Again, our half lift out, collapse back down, step back to your plank position, holding our plank position here today. And then from our full arm plank down to a forearm plank, dropping down. And from our forearm plank, moving into dolphin pose. Make a fist with one hand, bring it to the center of your mat, wrap your other hand around, and then just inchworm those feet up. So you're walking in, it's basically downward facing dog on your forearms. Head is right through the window of the arm, sits bones nice and lifted. Great stretch through the back line of the body. Holding four, three, two, and one. Drop to those knees. Child's pose, sitting back. And then we'll be finishing with pigeon and a little bit of inversion. So let's get into pigeon from downward facing dog. Again, palms are out. Curl the toes under, find your down dog. Float the right leg up to the sky here. And as we come into pigeon, the right knee is going to come out to the outer side of the right wrist. So you're literally swinging the leg across your mat, landing down. Now your lifted left leg is just what I call scootle, right? Those of you that take my classes, we scootle the leg back and we soften the knee and we relax. So this long leg acts as our lever, right? It's nice and long and straightened out and it's really helping guide us. We square our body forward. Now if my body was a clock, I would be right at 12 o'clock with my head. My knee is at 10 o'clock, so it's gonna move out to the side. For you guys, it's your right knee, so it's gonna be at two o'clock. So either way, you're at an angle to the sides of the mat. We wanna lift up nice and high, and then walk forward, and drop those elbows down. Now, as you're here checking in, Listen into your knee and what it has to say. Hopefully it's pretty happy. You're not falling off towards your hip, right? You're centered and we feel a good stretch. If your knee is bothering you, so if that right knee's cranky, you're simply gonna take this pose, flip over onto your back and hug it in. So this would be your option. Take the weight of the body off the knee and you're simply cradling it in like you're cradling a little baby. So this is your option for pigeon if we have a bad knee, all right? So either way, you're finding this stretch, taking your time. And then we'll curl the back toes under, you'll come up. We'll come back into downward facing dog. Now, if you're on your back already because you did the modification, just simply switch legs and do the other side. We'll be there in just a moment. So we're gonna lift up, we'll shake a leg, Come back into downward facing dog, lift the left leg up this time, drive it through, and we land down. So here's where your knee is at 10 o'clock, right? Landing down, don't forget to scootle and stretch your right leg back. 
and we come down onto our forearms. Now every knee tells a different story. So if this is kind of your cranky knee and you want to flip over onto your back now is a good time to do that, right? We want to go for the stretch through the hip, through the hamstring, through the inner and outer thigh. Um, and of course, we don't want the knee to be compromised in doing that. So make sure the knee is happy, healthy. One more breath here for this stretch. And this time we're simply going to come up and come around to a seated position. So we're gonna finish with our legs up in space and we have a couple options to do that to protect our back. So first option, if you're at home and maybe all you have are just some towels, you wanna to fold them up so they kind of make a little pillow, okay? And that's gonna be your, your cushion for your tushion, right? So you're gonna lie back, take your folded towels, and place them right underneath the sacrum and they'll just add a little lift to ideally pull your back space along and those legs are up in the air and you really don't feel like you're having any strain here it just gives a natural little pelvic tuck and allows you to lift the legs so folded up towels certainly a good option okay your other option might be a yoga block right so if you have your yoga block at home you want to just do the same thing you'll rock back and lift up. Now this one isn't quite as soft and cushy, of course, as your towel. So just go with what feels good for you, okay? And I know some of you out there, your third option is your sponge ball. So if you have a nice squishy sponge ball at home, then this would be a great option to use as well. We use these all the time in class. Um, so you're gonna rock back and you'll place your sponge ball underneath your back. So any one of those three options will do. Find what you have handy or what works for you and make sure you have it nice and comfortably, comfortably, comfortably positioned <laughs> underneath your back. All right. So if you're truly listening to this video, I'll expect a little post on Facebook about the word comfortably. So we want to be nice and comfy. We're all set. Feet are flexed. And we're just going to start to cross country ski. So one leg will come to you, the other leg goes away, and we switch. And I tell you what, this feels so good. So we're getting kind of double trouble. We get the stretch in the hip flexor and the quad. We get the stretch in the hamstring. Our back is happy. Of course, our head is happy. It's down and relaxed. Our arms are happy. They're down and relaxed. And we know it's near quitting time for our yoga workout. Let's bring the right leg to you. Let the left leg go all the way down. Let it be as long as possible until it lands. A little bend of the knee, heel lands. Reach up, grab your calf. Oh, great stretch. And then slowly switch. Let the leg land first and then reach up, grab your left calf. And then allow both legs to come up and just lightly hinge them towards you, arms long. And this is where I'm gonna leave you today in this nice hinge stretched position, just breathing in and breathing out. And you can stay here for as long as, as long as the dog will allow, right? Or the kids. Ah, just feel that energy returning through the legs. Feel the nice lift through the legs. Feel the openness across your chest. And finally feel truly at peace, right? So again, you may stay there as long as you can. Finding your breath in and out, maybe five or six breaths at least, maybe even a few more, and then feel free to go into some Shavasana for yourself. Really be kind to yourself, right? So remember that the past is history and the future is a mystery, but the present is truly a gift. And I certainly thank you all for spending your present with me. So with that, namaste. Have a great day.